This is going to be something that we're just going to have to focus on every month. It is going to be market moving um, so long as we are still in a rate hiking cycle, which we are. Uh, the CBOE odds of a rate hike of 25 basis points currently stand at about 77 percent, uh, a 23 percent chance for 50 basis points. Um, obviously, a screaming hot number will look like a massive setback. You will see those percentage uh, guesses flip and uh, it will not be a good day for stocks. But I don't think that there's really any reason to expect that. A lot of the data has been going in the Fed's direction, as we've pointed out on the show a lot. Um, so I would just say this is going to uh, move markets, even if it comes in as expected. You don't know how people are lined up, the positioning ahead of uh, the number. You'll find out yeah. relatively quickly. But Our this is not one of those data points that I'm willing to dismiss. Are, are we using up, so to speak, uh, a lot of our move before the report even comes out? Let's not forget we're in the midst of a pretty decent beginning of the year, and then you attack on today ahead of that. What does that mean? I don't think so, because December was a, was, was a, a trash fire. So I, I, I still think a lot of what we're seeing here is the end of tax-related selling pressure coming off and just a, a little bit more optimism about the year to come. Uh, I think everybody fully understands what the headwinds are at this point. Uh, there's been a ton of pessimism now for six months. Nobody is predicting anything specifically great for either the economy or for earnings. So that gives you room uh, to move up. And I think it gives you even more room if we get continued confirmation that the Fed is getting its way. I would point out uh, we, we no longer... Uh, are in a situation where you have negative yielding bonds. There aren't any anymore, even in Japan, even in Germany. Like, we're, we're now in a situation where the normalization has, I wouldn't say come full circle and we're all the way there, but everybody understands that that's the program and it's global. And so I think the stock's getting accustomed to that and the mentality of a stock market investor becoming accustomed to that is the best development that we're, we're able to talk about right now. Hey, what do you make of the fact that, you know, a lot of last year's laggards are the early year winners? You know, I'm looking at things like the Nasdaq, for example, up one and three quarters percent today. It's up near five percent in a week. A lot of stocks that were sold off hard last year seem to be performing pretty well to start the year. Just mean reversion. Is it anything to read into? What do you make of that? Well, a lot of the you got to remember that a lot of the stocks that we're talking about, let's say in the Russell 1000 growth index or in the or in the, the tech sectors, uh, the, the different sub industry groups, you had stocks down 40, 50, 60 percent at a certain point. If the if the if the if the headline and the news flow um, stops being negative, there's nobody left to sell for no reason, especially if you had a lot of tax related selling in the fourth quarter, which, of course, you did. So no one left to sell and uh, a little bit of index support. you got to remember, Judge, a lot of new money comes into the markets every January. A lot of rebalancing trades take place in January. So I wouldn't read too much into it. It could turn on a dime tomorrow. Um, but this is not as rare as you might think. Very often, when you turn over a quarter or especially turn over a year, especially a year with as much sector dispersion as we had last year, you are going to see that rebalance effect and you are going to see the laggards have their moment in the sun. That's probably what we're experiencing right now.